Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. Uh, super excited for today's demo. We're going to see the installation of Suno SQL. It's been uh, a topic that has been requested on the channel before. Folks are curious what Suno SQL is and more importantly, how to get this installed into your environment so you can take advantage of it for executing your DDL, your DML operations, loading data into Snowflake, plugging this into your CI CD DevOps pipeline. It's a very capable option to half now most folks who interact with snowflake would be pretty pretty familiar with the really cool snowflake snow side ui that's the experience you go into the web browser you can interact with snowflake now there are options of using say an ide like visual studio code or pycharm or you could even come in with a jupyter notebook connecting to snowflake also very capable but snow sql is another option command line interface for those that are familiar with this or that have workflows that requires something like this, NoSQL will be something you want to look into. And in today's demo, we're going to go through a quick installation of it so you can be up and running. Maybe you're hearing about SnowSQL for the very first time, or you just got a new computer and you want to refresh on how to get this installed. This will be the demo for you. Go ahead, click on SnowSQL for Mac OS, if that's what you have, or Windows or Linux, if that's what you have, and go through the installation. There are options in here for the Linux installer, RPM packages, Mac OS, you can use Homebrew. We've done demos for Homebrew. You can also use Microsoft Windows installer. So tons and tons of options. Now, once you've downloaded that and gone through the installation steps, it should look something like this, going through the installation on Mac. So the defaults should be fine for the most part. Click through the default and your installation should be complete. But there is a caveat. If you are using Mac, let's say, if Z uh, shell is your main terminal, you're going to want to do something to set it up so it works on Z shell. If you're using bash, this step would not be required. You can skip right through to the next step. So if I come in here and assuming you've gone through that installation and you come in, what you expect to do is something like Snow SQL. I'm going to do dash dash versions. So if you do this and you are using the Z shell, and you don't get the version showing up in here, then you need to do one more configuration, one more setup. Go down to Mac OS installer. This is what we need, this alias. You're going to want to set this alias in your Z shell HRC file. Go ahead, edit this file. Let's zoom in here for a second. Do enter and open up this file. Paste this line just to tell it as an alias that when you execute SnowSQL, it knows what applications to fire up that's all we need and if you do that save it exit that so doing that for the first time if you come in now and you do your snow sql dash versions you should see the version showing up again this is only if you're using the uh, z shell or terminal for bash you might not uh, need this a lot of the mac computers the newer versions are coming with z shell as a default so most folks would have to do this step now we've installed uh, snow sql but we need to connect to a Snowflake instance. If we go back here, I do have a Snowflake instance. We want to connect in here so we can write queries and execute DML operations, create tables, stages, load data, all the things you do in Snowflake. We want to do that from the command line. So this is the instance I'm working with. The way we're going to do that is go back to installation or make a copy of this configuring. This is where we're going to configure to tell SnowSQL what profile to use, what Snowflake account to connect to. So it's important uh, for us to do that. Now, when we install Snow SQL, it does set up a config file. We want to find that config file, go in there and update certain parameters within the config file. Here is the Snow SQL configuration file. Depending on how you prefer to browse, locate this file and go in to open that up. So this is the specific file. Let's go ahead, copy this. Depending on your privileges, you might have to CH mode and open things up. For me, I think I'm pretty good to go. Go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to show two ways of modifying the file. Now, the first thing we can do is simply do a V on this file and edit that file. But I'm not going to edit this way. Let's go over to my finder. And I did make a copy of the file called demo, config.demo. Because this main one has my credentials, so we're not going to look at that. Let's open up the demo option. For you, you're going to be opening the actual config file. Go ahead and open up this file and use a simple text edit. It's a very straightforward file. And this does have the parameters we need to set to connect to 
the Snowflake instance of our choice. Here is the account name, region, user, password, schemas, and all the configurations we need to point to a specific instance. You can either set that up. So if you set it up, the ones that are in Hashmark obviously are commented out, but you want to uncomment that and set at least the account name, the username, the password, that's the bare minimum. Now there is an option to set up a specific connection. So here you have connections that example and whatever is below here would be your connections. In this case, let's say this is a prod. This would be your, your prod connection for the prod connection. You can have the accounts underneath that and you can make a copy of this. You can have as many connections as you want. Let's say this is your dev and this would be your dev connections. This gives you a tremendous amount of flexibility to set up connections. So before we jump in, I'm going to go through just the basic connection and then we're going to come back and see how you can point to connections from the command line is really uh, straightforward to do. Again, I've made all the changes in my actual config. So not the demo one, the actual config does have the changes. Once you've done that, once you've put that in, and you might be curious too, before we actually jump into that, let's delete everything here. You might want to go back over to Snowflake to grab the account information. Come below here, select the profile you authenticated to, the account you authenticated to. You can copy the account identifier, but what you want to do is copy this URL, paste that here. You need this specific account locator. You will notice this account locator is as such. Now, if you go in and let's say, for example, you, you copy, do this slowly. You copy the account identifier. Notice it's, it's different. So you don't want to use this. You want to use the specific account locator like I showed before. Copy that. I'm going to do this one more time. Come in here. Copy this. Grab this. This is what you want. And this is the one you're going to use to set up in your account. So this is what you're going to want to use to set up in your account. So replace that. Then do the same for your username, your password. Just for the folks that are security conscious, this password is plain text. I repeat, the password is plain text. So this config file is not something you're going to want to version control. You're not going to want to be giving this to everybody. Keep this sensitive, right? Because this is, again, plain text. I think it's pretty clear what that means for most folks. All right. Now, assuming you have your config set up, from there, it's really, really straightforward to go ahead and do and start leveraging Snow SQL. Let's see some of the commands actually coming here. We've installed, we've uh, configured. Now it's just a matter of connecting to Snow SQL. So these are the options you can use to connect to Snow SQL. By default, if all you do is just Snow SQL without any of the parameters, then it will use the default configuration we set up. So coming back here, the default configuration we have is what? The different configuration is, is this. So this is the default configuration because it's not under any connection, right? So this is a default configuration. Whatever you said here, if you just come in with SQL, it would take you through that. So in my actual profile, I do have that setup. So if I come in and I do SQL, just like SQL, it should use that default profile and authenticate uh, me with that. It does take a few seconds. Now I'm in Snowflake. Now as a user through, and I'm using this warehouse. So your default roles, your default warehouses and all of that will kick in as such. Then you can always use, use database and it does give you some autocomplete here as such. So use database. And these are some of the databases I have showing up in here. So we can arrow down and use the Snowflake sample data as such very straightforward to work with now if you're gonna uh, exit this you simply do exclamation you quit and quit and this uh, quits for us right that's how we authenticate into the snow sql and you can start writing commands and doing a lot of stuff the next thing that we want to see is the connection so we saw going back here that we can use the default connection but let's say I want to go to dev and I want to go to prod and, and, and those are different accounts. You set all of those connections here, use the correct accounts accordingly and the users and the profiles you want. Now, what you're going to do for that is come back. It's a very straightforward syntax is it does show here. There should be a dash C somewhere in the documentation. If not, I'll just go ahead and execute that. 
So what you're going to want to do, I'm just looking for the right documentation here. So it does give an example here. So SnowSQL.c and the connection name. So if I go back over and my connection was, let's say the connection name was called example. So what we'll do is you're not going to put everything. So you don't want to put everything. You just want to do the example, what, whatever comes after the dot. So back here, we'll do SnowSQL. I know I do have a connection called example in there. So do a SnowSQL dash example, whatever username, password, account I had set up in there will come in as the example. So this is pointing to the same profile and that's it. All right. So there we have it, a, a good setup of SnowSQL. Now, once we have this, you can obviously go in and do a whole lot of work and manipulation and, and processing of data in Snowflake automation, writing of scripts. It's a very, very powerful command line uh, utility to have. So you can see there are some good examples here of using, if you want to use the help command to figure out certain help options, creating variables, defining variables, substitutions, very, very powerful. But this gives you that full blown command line uh, interface to use. You can execute SQL statements by simply pointing to a file that has a bunch of SQL statements in there from an automation perspective getting that executed, you can come in uh, to a particular connection, go to a specific database. So dash D takes you to a database, dash S takes you to a specific schema, and you can execute a specific query against that schema. So a really, really powerful option to have, but hopefully this has been helpful for you, for anyone who is looking at installing SnowSQL for the very first time on Mac. It's a very straightforward uh, process to do. Just to recap, download the package, get that installed, once you have it, this is just for Mac. Make sure you set up the alias for your ZS uh, HRC file. If you use that terminal, if you use bash, you really don't need it because bash would work with the profile. And then uh, you're going to want to go in and configure your, your connection to, uh, using the config file, point to your Snowflake instance. You can use different connections in there, very flexible. And then uh, you're often ready to query Snowflake. So. Hopefully this was helpful. I know this, a lot of folks were asking about this. We can always go in and do more demos, more tutorials on the specific syntax of jumping into to SnowSQL and, and taking advantage of that. We're also going to do a demo on how to leverage this connection. So if you imagine we've set up some connections in here, this could be very powerful. Let's say you're coming in from the Snowflake Visual Studio Code extension and you want to take advantage of this connection. How can you do that? There is, an, there is a way to do that. So watch out for the demos, depending on when you're watching, that demo might be out. So we'll showcase the Visual Studio Code extension and how to set that up, connecting to Snowflake from Visual Studio Code using the extension, but then still using your profile and your configuration. So you have one config helping you in different areas, be it SnowSQL or the Visual Studio Code extension for Snowflake. So really powerful. As always, thank you for watching and uh, sticking to the end. If you do like this, like it, share it with somebody that may get value out of it. I have been through your host with Demo Hub for today. I'll see you in the next demo. Mm -hmm.